Greetings, and God's peace be with you. As we walk together through this strange Holy Week of 2020, shaped by disease, anxiety, and social distancing, nothing seems normal. It is incredibly hard not to be able to gather together to mark the events and rituals of this week. But God is still with us. However, and in whatever small ways we find to mark the most meaningful week of the Christian year, God is still leading and shaping us. God is still sharing our life's journey in the fullness of both our joyful moments and in the difficult moments, like those that define this pandemic Holy Week. In a moment, I will read the Gospel reading from Mark for today, the story of the woman who anoints Jesus. To set a couple of details for you, in Mark's narration, this story immediately precedes the Last Supper. Alabaster was an exceptionally fine and pure translucent marble used for special ornamental items. Nard is an extremely costly, fragrant oil derived from the root of the Nardostachus jatamansi plant found only in the foothills of the Himalayas. In biblical times, this fragrance was associated with intimate love. And finally, recall also that in the earliest times of Israel's existence, anointing in the sense of calling to power kings was done by breaking a small container of oil and pouring it over the head of the anointed one. In this context, let us enter today's story. This reading is from the fourth chapter of Mark. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of a very costly ointment of pure nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. They scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you can show kindness to the poor whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Holy Week is first and foremost about God's love, God's incredible love for the whole world, the whole human race, a love so strong and present in Jesus that it was able to triumph over the worst hate and torture human beings at that time could inflict. Somehow it seems fitting that this story is always the Gospel reading for Monday of Holy Week. This story relates an event of extreme love. Reckless, wasteful, extravagant love. We take our early steps in the Holy Week journey hearing the story of this anonymous woman's reckless, wasteful, extravagant love that echoes God's own reckless, wasteful, extravagant love for every single human being. Love that is painfully on display in Jesus' journey to and through the cross. Who is this woman who dares intrude? She is anyone, everyone, and no one. She is unknown and silent in what she does, intent upon fulfilling the overwhelming needs she has to do this one unexpected, daring thing. It matters not to her that it is messy, unwelcome, and scorned by all others there but Jesus. She's driven. She must do it. There will never be another chance. The Spirit has blown its irresistible desire into her ordinary heart, filling it up and swelling it to the breaking point with love, urgent, burning love that insists on, demands expression. Nothing halfway will do. 
It costs everything, and she knows it. For us, this anonymous woman can be an icon of extravagant love. She can be an image of hope for all who throughout their lives seek to fall in love more and more fully with God. God present in our lives and, God's, and in the lives of every single human being. She can be an icon of seeking more and more understanding of the deepest divine love that counts a different kind of cost. Hers is no blind devotion or insipid, empty-headed act. Her action is bold, risky, and scandalous with a capital S. She enters a leper's house. She, a woman, is touching a Jewish male. And not just touching him, deliberately touching him intimately, pouring the overpowering aroma of perfumed oil over his head, rubbing it in his hair, looking into his eyes as it runs down his face. She, a woman, is flagrantly mimicking the male prerogative to anoint prophets, priests, and kings. Somehow unspeakably knowing in the deepest part of her being that Jesus is indeed Messiah and that he must be anointed now in this place, in this way. She is turning the fin normal financial values upside down. Logic and financial prudence abhor such waste. Her ac actions are reckless and wasteful. Surely such blatant waste is sinful. What will she live on? Or think of the ministry that could have been funded. But Jesus looked upon her and loved her. Here at last was a kindred soul, a soul on fire with God's love, a soul that somehow inexplicably understood his kind of messiahship, understood what he needed in that moment, understood what was coming, and that there was no turning back. She affirmed him, loved him, and anointed him for the rest of the hard, lonely journey to the cross. The end was coming. She must have sensed it just as surely as he did. Through her love, he was anointed and strengthened for the ordeal ahead, and anointed gently and surely for the burial at the end of it. She had done what she must. She had done what she could. Her formal legacy is just a few lines of a story, but just perhaps the real legacy of her extravagant love comes a few days later. Just maybe there were still a few faint wisps of aroma still drifting from Jesus' sweat-soaked hair, wisps of aroma giving him strength to his final struggling breaths, wisps of aroma to remind him of her love and God's. May we who walk this strange pandemic journey through Holy Week tune our hearts, souls, and bodies to follow the fragrance of this woman's love and Jesus' way of love, no matter how hard the road ahead. Amen.